Hello everyone, Bobo here. In this video, you'll find detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to apply the firmware updates to your Spartan Datapod, as well as to the Vortex VX1 and the sensor for the Vortex. You need a few things before we get started. Um, obviously your Datapod, you'll need your Vortex, you'll need the um, servo lead that makes the connection between the Datapod and the Vortex, You'll need a USB cable that makes the connection between the computer and the data pod. And you'll need a power source for the Vortex um, once we get to um, the second update. Okay, so let's get on with it here. In your computer, um, get your favorite browser and go to SpartanRC.com. Okay, initially when you go there, this is what you're going to see is the uh, home page. So go to the Vortex product page, go to the Downloads tab, and right down here at the bottom, All File Versions is where we want. So go ahead and click that. In here you're going to see two different areas of files that you could download. We want the M2 area, okay? So, um, but before we get to downloading files, there's two things that you should check first. Read this, that's a document that um, you'll want to check before you start any updating in case there's any precautions you need to take before you do the update and the release notes okay you can read that if you want basically what that's going to tell you is um, what the updates did for the products okay so go ahead and do that and then get down here this is the file for the um, data pod update it's called the vortex vx1 editor app so you'll go ahead and download that. Here, download this file is for the flight computer and download this file for the Vortex sensor. So when you download those files, make sure that you put them in a spot on your computer where you can find them easily. Um, in this case, I've already done that. Let's minimize this window. Um, if you've put them on your desktop, that's a great place to find them quickly. I've put them in order here. And the VX1 editor, this is the data pod update, uh, the flight computer, and the sensor. So we're going to update it in that order. So what we'll do here is double click the editor. It brings up a um, security warning. Go ahead and click to run. And now it comes to an unzip window. It's going to ask you where you want the files unzipped to. In this case, it doesn't matter because as soon as you click unzip, um, it will run itself. You don't have to go find something there and run it after that. So we'll go ahead and click unzip. Now it says this window, two files unzipped successfully. Okay, when you click OK, it's going to launch the application and it's going to expect you to connect the data pod. So for this update, the only thing you need connected to the data pod is the USB cable. You do not want anything connected over here. All right. So when we click OK, this is the window we get. We'll just um, zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, data pod not found. That's because we don't have it plugged in yet. So what we'll do is hold the S button down on the data pod while we plug the cable into the computer. We'll do that right now. You see what happens? It says USB in the data pod screen and it says update file, data pod connected and start update. So we'll go ahead and click start update. It runs pretty quickly and there it's done. It says it's completed successfully and power off. So at this point, what we're gonna do is unplug the USB cable from the computer, leave the other end plugged into the data pod. Okay, get out of that window. We'll go right into the next update and that's the VX1 flight computer update. Same thing, double click it, run it, unzip it. Now we get to this window. Two files unzipped successfully. 
we know that when we click this OK button, it's going to want us to do something. OK, so for updating the flight computer, we need to connect the uh, data pod to it. So grab that servo lead that um, you have connected to the data pod port of the flight computer and plug that into this port of the data pod. Just like that. Now also have some sort of power connection to the vortex like a, a receiver pack or whatever you're going to use to power your vortex. Have that ready too. Okay, So we will click to uh, start it. There's the window just like before. It says data pod not found. Okay, as soon as we connect the data pod, and remember to press S while you make the USB connection, it's going to recognize that it's connected in bridge mode because it knows, um, due to the application file, that it's going to update the uh, flight computer. So it's going to expect right after that that you're going to apply some power to the flight computer. So just be prepared for that. And uh, we'll go ahead and connect the data pod right now. Press S. Plug it in. It says power on your vortex now. Okay, there I just applied power. There we go. Shows data pod pass through. That means it's in bridge mode. Uh, update file. This is what's going to be applied to the flight computer. Start the update. Looks like this is taking a little bit longer than the data pod, but what it's about maybe 15 seconds. When it's done, it'll say um, update successful or something like that. And then we'll simply uh, disconnect the power to the vortex and unplug the USB cable from the computer. Alright, there we go. I'm going to pull the power to the vortex. And disconnect the USB cable from the computer. And right now, in order to update the sensor, you have to remove the lead that makes the connection between the data pod and the vortex. And plug the sensor lead in its place. like that. Okay, so real quickly let's launch the uh, VX1 sensor update application. Run it, unzip it just like before. The sensor is going to get its power through the USB cable. So all you have to do uh, after we click OK is to hold the S button down on the data pod and plug the USB cable into the computer and we'll see what happens here. Same thing, data pod not found. Zoom in on it a little bit. And now we'll hold the S button down, plug it in. It says power on your vortex sensor now. Okay, it's already got power. All it needs to do is recognize it and then it'll apply the update. There we go, start the update. And same thing as before, you'll see the progress bar and it'll update pretty quickly. All right, so once this is done, you've updated all three of your products, the data pod, the flight computer, and the sensor, and you will be ready to fly your model with the latest firmware. Hope this video helped out and um, happy flying.